Hey everybody, welcome back to Catalyst Shoujo, episode 95, I think. Seventh episode I've recorded in a row now. That's a full week's worth of videos, so, yay. Um, this should be the last one on Rin's good ending, if this is the good ending. This is supposed to be the good ending, it doesn't feel like it though. But uh, yeah, after that we'll go and do uh, some choices, because we, we're still missing uh, scenes and uh, stuff, so uh, we'll go back and... Um, to those. There you are! Hello. A conflict arises. Should I stay here or go somewhere else? I'm not sure if I even want to eavesdrop on them. <laughs> I think I will. Man has lose to curiosity, and so I stay close enough to listen in. He's like, I think I should listen. But I totally will. I have a wine glass. Oh, hello. hello. Welcome back to Catch a Soldier. Wait, that's the wrong voice. Gotham, rise up and take back your city. <laughs> Man has lose curiosity. That's what doing. Their, their voices echo in the hallway, but no matter. There's nobody around safe for me. Dear girl, what on earth are you thinking of leaving like that on a big night? I couldn't say anything. Compared to Nomi's scalding tone, Rin sounds awfully quiet and withdrawn. Her words seem to drown under his. I have to say, I'm very disappointed in you, Tezuka. It was no good at all. Never mind all the things I did for you, but what about Sai? What about all the guests who wanted to meet you? There was nobody, even his cell. You have embarrassed us very badly, Tezuka. Reputation is what counts. Surely you know that. It's all right. I don't need it. Don't need? What do you think you know? Rin replies only seem to agitate the teacher more, his voice rising of every sentence. The path of an artist is a thorny one, I tell you, a thorny! You have to see the big picture, there will be bad times and good times. Things are like they are. It'll be alright, even... You might now think it's all so wonderful and easy, but how far would you have gotten without me? I won't always be there for you. When you lie on the floor of your minuscule room and you rent... Your rent three weeks late, your mind blank for the fourth week straight, then you will wish you had listened to old Nami a bit more. Man, he's been a bit fucking nasty, isn't he? When you keep measuring how the shadow of your chair becomes longer for the spring because that's all your lethargy allows, maybe that's when you'll start caring about your career. That doesn't matter. Your resolve is not enough. I am not a resolved person. You are not a resolved person. Then tell me why! Why, why did you go through with all this trouble if it amounts to a mosquito shit? <laughs> a mosquito shit? Who says that? I didn't... Mosquitoes might have pretty big shits. Oh dear, teacher blew a fuse. Him yelling at Rin makes me feel like a, feel a bystander's guilt. If I had gone with her, maybe he wouldn't have gotten so angry. If I had not let her run away, he wouldn't have gotten angry in the first place. I still could, have, I still could go and save her. I don't think I can. I was the same. I yelled at Rin too, and I'm feeling all the more embarrassed about it now. I felt justified to vent my anger at her, f at her face just because, just because I felt it was her fault that I was too f so frustrated. I was no more justified than the teacher is. A terrible silence sets upon the hallway. Rin does nothing. Does not have anything to say to Nomia. Whether she has run out of answers or she knows that arguing would only make him angry is more is anyone's guess. The teacher has nothing more to say either, it seems. Or maybe he just ran out of breath. He's dead. She just killed him. She just kicked him in the face. For a moment, I imagine the two of them just staring at each other. One full of red-hot anger, the other full of... Yes. What? I, can, I can't tell how Rin feels. Not before. Not now. She just seems to expect Rin to say something too. But since she doesn't, he finally continues in a quieter, but not less angry voice. What worth is there in doing so much work when the outcome is nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Still, Rin will not say anything. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have gotten so excited. He does not sound sorry at all. Rather, his tone is cold and sharp, like he was spitting the words out of his mouth. It seems I was expecting too much. You are not an artist, after all. Yeah, not sorry at all. <laughs> He's like a... He storms out of the club room and down the stairs without noticing me. After he has gone, I peek carefully inside the classroom. Rin is standing there in front of the teacher's desk. I couldn't say I'm sorry. She says it in the humid air of the classroom, not to me. 
But since the room won't answer here, I will have to. That wasn't fair of him. He was angry, but still. I can't decide how to end my sentence. Disclaiming the teacher feels like disdaining my own behavior from two days ago. Stupid, but correct in hindsight. Rim won't answer me, staying petrified where she stands, so I walk up to her. She stood up for herself, in a way. I didn't expect that. I can't determine whether it's unbecoming or not, but either way, she did it. Against me, she never did. I sort of wish she had. Maybe I would not feel this bad then. Lately, it really seems I've been wishing for all kinds of things. Rin? Go away. Why? Why? What are you saying? Oh, not this again. You're angry with me too, right? I thought you were my friend. I thought he was too. Her voice is unlike I've ever heard it. It's bitter, sharp like needles. I thought he was my friend too. And she keeps staring pointedly at her toes. I don't think it's about that. He wanted you to be something you are not. And... I take a brief death and finally catch her eyes in my own, locking our gazes. I'm sorry. I wanted us to be something else too, more than friends. Maybe that's why I couldn't contain myself and became so frustrated just like the teacher did. What more? There is nothing more to me than me. That's all I am. I don't understand that. Well, the answer should be obvious. Well, that should be obvious, right? I remember myself thinking of the purpose of friendship, to put up with everything and anything, to be there for your friend. Did I fail as a friend? Thinking it could be a stepping stone for something else? Maybe because of those thoughts, I didn't manage to put up with the things to keep it together. As outrageous as Rin is and was, I shouldn't have let myself get caught into that, especially when I started feeling the way I did towards her. So, did I fail? That's what her eyes seem to ask. I'm sorry, Rin. I might not be able to be your friend. I don't think I could ever be a good friend to you. I say these things because they are true, not because one of us would like to hear them. them. <laughs> But they are something that must be said. The finality of my words create a shaking silence, for what could either of us add to that? Why? Why does all this happen? People are doing things I don't ask for, and I don't want, and everyone keeps getting angry at me. I have no idea what's going on anymore, and I can't stop feeling like I want to run away from everything. She shuts her eyes tight and breathes out deeply, calmly. When the eyelids open, all I can see is dark green desperation. I have no idea what's wrong with me. Her frantic out... I have no idea what's wrong with me. There you go. I have fre Her frenetic outburst stupefies me for a moment. And for a heartbeat, we just gaze into each other's face. Seeing her confused eyes desperately looking for answers from mine only makes me sad because I know I have none. I don't know either. But you know, you yourself said that things are not right nor wrong. They just are. You either accept them, work to change them, or give up. Not that I hate you, or that the teacher Nomia does. It's just... Think that I'm the kind of person who gives up when he feels he can't go on. And even if you hate this, this is how things are. I'm saying pretty cruel things, but I can't stop myself. The words keep rolling off my tongue with slow, hard certainty. I can see them hitting Rin almost like physical blows. As the wetness gathers into the corners of her eyes, they are still wide of the shock of rejection. As the tears start strolling down her pale cheeks, she does nothing to stop them. As they fall down on the floor but one by one, she stands still, staring at me with a gaze full of hollow disbelief. But reality catches up. Rin slumps forward as if she was deflating, and buries her face as deep in my shirt as she can. Rin is heavy and feather light when I support her weight. Rin is heavy and feather light? Ah, God. Ah! I should not stand here reading for this long. It's been. It's like. From, from like three hours? Three and a half hours? She doesn't really sob or brawl. She just leans against me, letting her tears burn through my shirt into the skin. Skin! Skin! My skin! You're burning my skin! Ah! Your acid tears are burning my skin! The goggles! They do nothing! And I let her, bringing her hand around her shoulders, bringing my hand around her shoulders in a clumsy hug that does no good to comfort her. I can feel Rin's vertebrae against my fingertips, like hard and jagged reminders of how messed up things are. Oh god. 
Her slim shoulder quivering against my palm is a pitiful sight, and the hopelessness of being apart for the cause for Rin's sadness keeps shredding my heart. To make a girl cry is the most despicable thing to do. I've ever made a girl cry. Even Rin. Especially Rin. Behind that veil of aloofness, Rin is just a human being too. Just as confused, scared, and as lost of any of us as, as any of us is. Are? Is? Any of us are. Any of us is. Most of the time it seems that there is no rhyme or reason for what Rin does and say, says, 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 what do you say? But for once, I think I really understand how she feels. But no words can express it, and no words can make it better. So wordless, wordless we stay, quietly waiting for her tears to run out. Time passes agonizingly slowly, even the lazy specks of dust floating in the air seem to pause into a standstill. The obligatory wall clock is ticking. Wall clock! It's the, I'm going to start calling them wall clocks. It's ticking. I'm going to. Wall ticks. Wall. It's, click, it's ticking distractingly from above the door. I decide against counting the seconds because it would make them feel longer. Eventually, Rin stares, stares a little and, still smothering herself against my chest, mutters into my shirt. Let me be here for a while. Please, Sir Sal. Just give me a little while. A soothing deluge spreads into my consciousness. The knowledge that while being here for Rin is all I can do for her. That's all she wants right now. Even after we've all we've gone through. Sure. So she stays there. But I can't- I still can't bring myself to draw her closer. So I can embrace her properly. It's because doing it would make her so- make me so sad that I don't know if I could bear it. The realization that we might never really be able to become what I- what- what we want to be for the other crystallizes into my mind as a diamond hard enlightenment. A pang surges through my heart like an electric shock. It's painful. This clarity hurts. What can we be for each other? What meaning is there for us to desperately cling to each other even though we seem so futile? What should I say to Rin? How to make her feel better? I do not know if any of these things I fear knowing them would hurt only hurt. I do not know any of these things, and I fear knowing them would only hurt more. Forcefully, I push all that out of my mind because I don't want to be thinking of hurtful truths. My thoughts calm down soon enough. The sadness disperses until all that I have left is me and Rin, and the tender feeling of her warmth and softness against my chest. When did I fall in love with her? I said it. I can't remember, but I'm certain it was the way before the warm touch of her lips on my own. On that orange-coloured afternoon when she was sick of cold and I went to see her because of unclear reasons. Her carefree attitude, the air of otherness around her, and all the things that make Rin herself. Those things captured me with irresistible force. The way she could take in anything and everything, giving only the value she herself placed. Weighing all things fairly and without prejudice, seeing the world as she wanted. This is something I could never do, and Rin was probably more of a muse to me than anything ever was to her. To me, it and anything. She seemed so free to me, truly a free spirit, while I constantly worried about everything. Seemed so inhibited and that it was almost embarrassing. Maybe that's why I latched so tightly onto Rin, trying to get inside her world that was so different from my own bleak life. Before I noticed it, that irresistible force had pulled me dangerously close to her. But it turned out it was way too alien for me. And I had I and I forgotten Newton, and I had forgotten Newton of all things. The gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the objects. So if two people f f feel something for each other, <laughs> even though feelings are not governed by the constants of the universe, I can't help thinking that for some time now, I've been a satellite to Rin's bright, brightly shining planet. Planet Rin. The thought makes me almost laugh. She really does seem to be from another planet at times, minus green skin and possibly some tentacles. Perhaps some of my stifled laughter, perhaps because of my stifled laughter, Rin pulls away and I let her go, feeling the cold when her warmth goes away and a slight embarrassment for letting my thoughts run wild like that. I credit that as Rin being a bad influence on me. Ah, oh, God. While being glad at the same time that she can't read thoughts for real. See, I'm hurting myself for you guys. Rin's bitter t tears have dried up and she looks a little more like herself again. The lost look in her eyes is still there, though. Her gaze wanders around restlessly before stopping at me. What happened just now? Can you tell me? 
What? What do you mean? I cry. She says that hesitantly, as if not believing it herself. Yeah. She keeps staring at me as if pleading guidance that she wouldn't have to feel so lost. Why? You were sad. Man, she's like, literally it's like she has Asperger's. <laughs> like a form of it. Is that what you want to say? Well, I, mean, I guess you wouldn't cry. Ah, not really. It's like, I it, don't know, it's like, it's literally like she just can't comprehend emotion. I don't know. It feels weird to cry. What? I don't believe it. I mean, everyone does that. It's not... I bite my tongue before I finish arguing about normality. Norms do not apply to the person I'm talking to. It's always felt so wrong. Different from what is in me. Like I couldn't really tell what I felt. So I started thinking that maybe I don't know what I'm feeling. Maybe it's me who is wrong. I thought those kind of things. I thought that painting was enough because it felt that I did at least that right. That's all that's inside me could become a picture if I tried really hard, then it could. But it doesn't feel like it's enough anymore. Because if nobody else can see that, I will still be alone. Was it wrong to try? Everyone got really angry at me for that. I've really heard Rin say this much at once before. Once she finishes, she simply shuts up, looking so neutral that it's hard to believe she just said what she said. I don't know what to think. Rin was so desperate for someone to look at her paintings and somehow see right through them into her soul to understand her feelings. Because she felt she could not express them in any other way. How can she... How can one say whether that is right or wrong? Could it be that all this time she's been trying to reach out to me like I've tried to reach out to her? I sit down on the desk to think and to rest my legs that kept us both standing for a long while. You know, when I read a good book or look at a starry sky or whatever, sometimes I too feel something profound, like a shoot. I don't know how to describe it. But the instant I try to put it in words, I feel that I lose something. It doesn't feel as real, as true as it did inside my head. Yeah, I get that. I know that. It feels a bit phony. Damn. Even what I said just felt phony. I offer a smile that is meant to be between funny and self-deprecating, but Rin doesn't react. Anyway. It might be that nobody can ever express their true feelings so that others understand. Reality has no change of chance of living up to what someone has inside their head. Nothing can match that. Not even your paintings. Except maybe for you. But I suppose you can't keep everything inside. You'd explode for real then. What I'm trying to say is, I don't think it's wrong to express your feelings, even if you use painting as your conduit. You can't just expect people to understand you any better than they would if you did it any other way. In fact, you can't expect people to understand you at all. It's because everything is so subjective. You see the world the way you do, but it's different from everyone else. But isn't that terrible? I guess it is, in a way. She frowns, looking probably as stricken as she can, which is not much. But it's enough for me to understand that Rin is not particularly happy. I think it might make me sad after all. Yeah, I know. I wish I could do something to help it. I don't think I sound bitter, even though I am, a little. This is my problem. I cannot be what Rin wants for her. And for some reason, she can't do the same for me, either. It's like, it's like Batman and Joker. An immovable force, an, an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. She makes a difficult face, carefully trying to pick the words she wants to say. So Rin has times when it's hard to say anything too. It can't be helped, I think. But if you say that, it makes me feel a little better. It's funny how some seemingly irrelevant things are some significant ones at times like this. Like how Rin's voice is very small, barely audible when she says that. And how her short bangs can cover her eyes when she looks downwards. And how they can't cover the deep red colour rising on her cheeks and all the way to the tips of her ears. They turn into a very interesting shade of red. A deafening silence follows. A deafening silence. That's such a weird phrase. A deafening silence. It can't be a deafening silence. It's very awkward, as if I saw something that wasn't meant to be seen, even if it wasn't on purpose. I don't know what I want to say to that, but I keep feeling that I should know. She doesn't either. Still, it feels like there's no momentum to lose even if we kept silent. Keep silent. Like if we have some weird wordless connection that would hold ever even so. Rin keeps shifting her weight from one foot to the other restlessly, looking everywhere around the room except at me. She is the one who finally breaks the spell. Can we go? 
I don't want to stay here. Oh yeah, of course. Where? My reply is covering my nervousness as badly as her question is covering hers. You can go wherever you like. I want to sleep. I haven't really slept for a few weeks. It feels like there's a flock of light blue butterflies inside my head. It makes it hard to think properly. The kind that you think is too blue to really exist. Like Emmy's panties this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Row up. Uh, she shakes her head, and uh, and I almost expect a couple of ultramarine-colored morphos to pop out of her ears, 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 out of her ears. A small smile tugs upwards the corner of her mouth. That reminds me, the blue, not the panties. The word for a flock of butterflies is a swarm. I looked it up. That makes my eyebrows raise into a questioning arch. Why don't you use it then? I like the other word better. Why look it up in the first place, then? Then you should use it, right? She nods and falls silent. Her gaze is it's gonna end really weirdly now, isn't it? Her gaze escaping mine to the side, attracted by the dark orange sunlight refracted, refracting from the windows. We stay like that for a little while, me silently looking at her silently looking out of the window. Hey, you all right now? She glances at me from the corner of her eye, looking wistful again. The sunlight's reflection doesn't betray any more of her inner feelings. I'll need to think about that. I want to continue this conversation, grasping at those straws that she finally revealed to even exist. But Rin is looking out the window so absent-mindedly that I know she won't be responsive in any way that would make sense. It's like some kind of defense mechanism of hers to avoid being sensible. Her mind is like a butterfly in itself. Always fluttering around, some, fluttering somewhere anyway, so, so, fluttering somewhere away whenever it's stirred. Just when I thought I could see behind her veil, she jumps out of my reach again. Maybe that's just how Rin is. Maybe that's something I, could, I should just accept to get to some peace of mind. Okay. I'll walk you back to the dorms then. Thanks. Really. The empty hallways of the school devoid of its students feel very lonely. Less than one hour after the summer vacation began, the buildings seem to be deserted, and all that intrudes on the stillness of the hallways are our footsteps. The change is sudden, but it shows how the building is just an empty shell, dead without its students and teachers. It's as though the school has become a private world for only the two of us, a desolate place filled with silence and chalk dust. Things I have to change. She says it out of the blue while we walk down the staircase from the third floor, still managing to feel like she is mirroring what I just was just thinking before. That's what people must do sometimes. That's the last thing we say to each other that day, even though there would be so much to talk about. And even those words drown in the all-encompassing silence, disappearing into the stagnant air as if they were never said. Oh, there is more. Okay. This must be like the last chapter now. The first day of summer vacation is a disappointment. I woke up, water came down from the lit from the laden sky in the biblical proportions. I was optimistic at the time. A quick summer shower, I thought, torrents of rain for a few minutes, then it's gone. No such luck. Rainwater is relentlessly pouring down the from the blue's grey sky outside, streaming down the glass of my window in small brooks and rivers and gathering together from a miniature ponds on the walkways. Just like it has done for the past two and a half hours. So I've been half heartedly cleaning up in between half heartedly reading a book, packing my stuff on the side where I got bored for the, of the first two. Half heartedly, half heartedly, half arsing. The weather drags my spirits pretty down too, making it harder to do anything properly. Something bumping quite loudly against my door rouses me from my apathy. That'll be, that'll be Rin hammering herself into the door. I hope it's not Kenji and his crazy indoors bowling alley. <laughs> That fucking indoors bowling alley. I hear no more sounds from the corridor until I walk to the door and open it. Rin. I wish seeing her would evoke some more emotion in me. But for one, I'm too surprised that she came to see me. And for two, she's soaking wet. Her uniform shirt is drenched and she's standing in a self-created puddle. Droplets of rainwater are dripping from her short bangs and sliding down her nose until they fall down from the tip. One. 
by one. Um, hi? How are you feeling? Medium normal. <laughs> the relative... <laughs> okay, what the fuck? <laughs> Medium normal. The relative questionability of her statement aside, she sure doesn't look too good. You're all wet. Because I came from the outside. Do you know it? Why would you be outside? It's raining buckets out there, if you hadn't noticed. I haven't. It's raining pretty hard, though. I was on a walk. Is that what you, is that what you call wallowing in self-pity? Do you think I'm pitiful? No, I implied that you think you are. I'm not, and rain is not a sad thing. Don't you ever walk in the rain? I do, but only with proper equipment, like an umbrella. You just need to imagine you have a blue umbrella with white stripes. It, it might be tough when rain is falling on my head. Just imagine harder. Yeah, she's definitely back to normal. Those half sarcastic remark, uh, inconsiderate remarks that really push my buttons, even though she doesn't mean it. That vacant, spaced out stare that always expects more than it gives. It's so very much like her. I may need to come in. I need some help with this water and clothes I'm wearing. My brain quickly solves this equation. I stumble with my words. A stark display of contrast against Rin's easygoing self-invitation. But, Emmy... Rin shakes her head vehemently, causing water to sprinkle everywhere. She left. Besides, she would just worry and fuss until she could not worry or fuss anymore, which always takes a troublesomely long time. It's in fact longer than I want to hear her fussing, and I thought you probably are not the fussing kind. She slams onto my desk with a squishy sound. Her soap clothes are making the desk and everything on it wet, but she doesn't care. Okay, fine, I'll help you out. I have a towel somewhere. Do you want dry clothes? Is in uniform fine? I'm taller than you, but... Everything is fine. With a little searching, I find a fresh uniform and a fluffy towel from the depths of my closet. The towel in one hand and the uniform in the other, I turn to face Rin again, uncertain of the next step. There is something wrong with me. I'm not... Skip then. There's something wrong with me. A normal guy would just... Something wrong with me. A normal guy would just... Stop worrying. It's not a problem. She could probably see right through my hesitant demeanor. As if I was completely transparent to her. I push my anxiety away and concentrate on the eight buttons lined on her shirt, just like mine has. The only first button is an obstacle, and after getting it over and undo the others with slightly less shaking hands.